Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to East Central Missouri and the world, and welcome to the James Strong Show podcast, podcast number 365. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for making us a part of your day. I appreciate it. This podcast was recorded on the morning of Saturday, June the 15th, from the James Strong Studio in Western St. Charles County. Podcast 365, a whole year's worth of podcasts I've done since, uh, since walking away from terrestrial radio. Is that a milestone? Maybe, maybe. So what do we do for the 365th podcast? Okay, do we talk about politics? No. Uh, Do we talk about race relations? No. Do we talk about, well, we talk about the, in, in my opinion, the most staggering, interesting, and yet unsolved thing that's going on in today's world. And I'm not talking about, is Donald Trump's hair real or not? I'm talking about UFOs. Who says UFOs are real? Well, first of all, I've said for years UFOs are real. That doesn't necessarily mean that little green men from Mars are for real. But UFOs are for real. There's just too much evidence out there to show that, hey, there's stuff flying around that we have no idea what it is. Even the Pentagon, the government has admitted, yep, you know what, we don't know what this stuff is. Now, could this be a false flag? Could this be uh, just a, 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 a detraction so that the uh, uh, industrial complex can just get their feet in the door? You can go over conspiracy theory after conspiracy theory after conspiracy theory. But the fact of the matter is, there's a lot of stuff going on out there that nobody knows what it is. What is it? I don't know. Is it something that we know what it is? No, we don't know what it is, okay? But who says UFOs are real besides just me, okay? If a a dopey guy who does a podcast from his house about once a week says UFOs are real, that's probably not a big deal. It's my opinion, but it's an opinion based in fact, as are most good opinions and all of mine, by the way. Who says UFOs are real? Well, how about researchers from Harvard College? How about researchers from MTU? How about retired Army Colonel Carl Nell? How about UFO researcher Jorg Arnu? How about uh, former Defense Department of Defense Officer Chris Mellon? That's just a few. And these are stories that came out this week. So there... there there were about five new stories out there, okay, that I looked at. And I thought, you know what? Every week you get one or two. But this week, I've stumbled upon five of them. And we're going to talk about five of them on today's podcast. That's today's essay. Who says UFOs are real? Friends, I've got a long list. Today, I, I, I stumble upon, this is out of a, I think the UK Daily Mail, they've come upon some more of these mummies. And if you look at the pictures of these mummies, they were actually in Peru. And uh, there are some U.S. researchers that want to take DNA samples. The people in Peru say, we don't want you to. Uh, There's a lot of reasons why they don't. First of all, they don't want uh, people from other countries monkeying in their business. Peru is a, uh, a sovereign nation. And uh, as much as we'd like to think we're king of the castle and we're all that matters, we're not. There's other people who have a sovereign country and they don't want us sticking our nose in it. But if you look at pictures of these UFO or these uh, of mummified aliens in Peru, uh, they're in a fetal position and they have the big elongated, elongated heads, kind of like... Kind of like uh, what is it? Uh, predator, okay. That long, that long, long, elongated head, long fingers. I mean, these these mummies don't look human to me. Now, could they just be mutants? Sure. Uh, in fact, that's what uh, some of these researchers want to say. Well, let's go ahead and take UFO or uh, DNA samples of these mummified beings and find out if they have. Human DNA, maybe it's 100% human DNA, maybe it's partial human DNA, maybe these are hybrids, maybe this is a lost lost civilization, who knows what it is. Uh, 
But that story just causes me to scratch my head because if you look at these mummified remains of these beings, um, they don't look human. They look like there's something else, okay? So again, if not space aliens, then what are they? The questions continue to come up. Uh, there was a feature, a story, of a research paper, I guess, uh, done by, it was a joint effort by Harvard and Montana Technical University this week. Don't know if you heard about this, but um, an unidentified, technologically advanced population could be living secretly on earth. Now that claim was made by a, a, a new paper by researchers at Harvard and Montana technical university. Now they speculate that unidentified anomalous phenomenon, UAP, another term for UFOs could be living underground on the moon or even walking among us. Now, according to the researchers who wrote this paper, um, they acknowledge that their hypothesis may still be regarded skeptical by the general scientific community, but they still deserve consideration in a spirit of humility and openness. That's in quotes. Now, the paper uh, talks about the possibility of what they call crypto terrestrials as an explanation for unidentified and unexplainable observations made worldwide every year. Now the paper talks about the, the possibility of here's some theories that it has. Okay. They suggest that perhaps a remnant form of an ancient civilization still remains on earth. In other words, something from way back when perhaps an intelligent species evolved separately from humans and now stays hidden. Perhaps crypto terrestrials travel from another time period or from another planet. The un or the identified creatures are of supernatural origin and likened to earthbound angels. Now, the paper also suggests that the idea of crypto terrestrials, this is a relatively new term they use, crypto terrestrials. In other words, something. Another being other than human, how's that? That they're living in or under hotspots like lakes and volcanoes. Now, the researchers purpose the influx of sightings to similar ideas, and they say that it's due to exit or entrance points of hidden societies deep within Earth, the hollow Earth theory, and other possibilities for crypto-terrestrial sediments lie nearby like on the moon. In fact, if you remember back in 2023, just last year, Career intelligence officer David Grush, and we've talked about him on the podcast, he alleged that the United States government has been keeping UFO research programs a secret from the general public, and the government denied claims like Grush's repeatedly. Now, before you say, well, shoot, Strong, this guy said it happened, the government denied it. Well, the government has denied a lot of things for years, for decades, and then all of a sudden they say, yeah, you know what, it seems to be true. And they seem to admit this stuff either A, after everybody dead is gone and can't defend themselves, or B, after it's just obvious that it's true. I mean, it's it, the whole 1 billion Chinese can't all be wrong. If you've got 400,000 people in Phoenix who saw big lights flying overhead, you finally got to say, yep, that was something. We don't know what it is. You can't say, ah, it was flares. It was uh, swamp gas. You can't say that anymore. Now, this paper, let's get back to the paper by uh, Harvard and Montana Technological University. The paper dwell, delves into the government's response to sightings, adding that many believers feel federal agencies are deliberately downplaying the topic or at least um, uh, blurring the extraordinary nature of of many UAP related events. Now, the researchers of this paper do acknowledge the extraordinary nature of their claim, saying in part, quote, we entertain them because some aspects of UAPs are strange enough that they seem to call for unconventional explanations. And that's kind of what I've said all along. Okay, maybe they're not this, but if they're not this, then what are they? And 
Sherlock Holmes, I guess you would say Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, because he was the uh, uh, the creator of Sherlock Holmes. But Sherlock Holmes in his novel, and I've read every Sherlock Holmes mystery novel out there. Uh, Sherlock Holmes would say, the way you find out the truth is you eliminate everything else, and what's left is the truth. So we keep trying to eliminate things. If it's not swamp gas, if it's not somebody's imagination, if it's not this, if it's not that, if it's not lights, if it's not birds, then what is it? Okay. Now, you can't say it's alien spacecraft, but you can say it's not this, 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 and that. And this newspaper, or this, this, this research article talks about that. Not, that's not the only story that came out this week. Also this week, there's a retired Army colonel, retired Army colonel Carl Nell. He claimed that non-human intelligence not only exists and has been on Earth, but is currently actively interacting with humanity. Now, again, this is a retired Army colonel. This is not, this is not some buck private who peeled potatoes who wants to get attention, Okay. It's a retired Army colonel, Carl Nell. Now, Nell made the statement during a live chat at the SALT Eye Connections Conference, which is billed as a conference for disruptive innovation in finance and geopolitics. Now, Nell cited his previous experience on the Pentagon's UFO UAP task force. So this guy was involved in that, appointed by the government on this task force. Okay, so again, he's just not some coast-to-coast dope who decided to write a book. This is what he used to do. And he made this claim based on his experience there. In fact, he said he he has previously suggested the government has agreed to hold back top-secret information for some time and suggested that failing to disclose it would be catastrophic. Now, Nell said the interactions between non-human intelligence and humanity is not new. He says it's been going on for a long time. In fact, the term non-human intelligence is one that's been used recently by officials speaking about the possibility of alien life. Now, Nell had a long career in the Army. He's worked for aerospace companies and was the former director of the UAP task force, which investigated anomalous phenomenon for the Pentagon. So think about this. The guy's retired Army officer, okay? He works for aerospace companies. And the government said, hey, you're qualified enough. We're going to have you work on this government tax task force that reports to the Pentagon. Okay. So if this guy just comes up, if he's talking smack, he's got a big reputation that runs the risk of being ruined. So why would he just make this stuff up? Now, Nell is not the only senior figure to come forward. In fact, other senior figures like former Deputy Undersecretary Christopher Mellon and retired Navy Admiral Kim Gullett are also making many of the same points that Nell did. And again, these these aren't just these are these are guys with credentials. A former Deputy Undersecretary to the Defense Department, a retired Navy Admiral, okay? Now, interest in UFOs and extraterrestrials have spiked since former intelligence officer David Grush came forward with claims the Pentagon is operating a secret UFO retrieval program. Now, Grush was not the first one to make these remarks, but he is the most recent. In fact, Grush said he he heard credible stories of the program from officials he spoke to during his time on the UAP task force. So these UAP task force guys are coming forward with all this information. Now, Grush said he's not the only program, uh, that that's not the only program being kept secret from the American public. He said it's also being concealed from Congress. Now, the Pentagon has denied the allegations, and the All-Domain Anomaly Resolution Office, AARO, which is now tasked with investigating UAP reports, issued a report that said there is no evidence that UAPs are alien in nature, and there's no program to retrieve alien technology. That's the official government thing on this. Now, the agency did acknowledge that the Kona Blue Program, that's a proposed effort to reverse engineer alien technology, existed, but said the program never got off the ground because no no such technology was ever discovered. Okay, so there's the door 
cracking open. We've never had something like this. We've never had something like this. We've never had something like this. Okay, what about the Kona Blue program? Well, yeah, you know what? Actually, we did have something like this, uh, but we just canceled it because we never found anything. Okay, first of all, the program never existed. Then when you catch them in the lie, it's okay. It, it existed, but it never really got off the ground because, yeah, Kona Blue was a program to reverse engineer crashed UFOs, but it never got off the ground because we never found anything like that. Now, can, can you understand why me and many others just don't believe the government when they say this? Because it's denial, denial, denial. Well, okay, maybe, maybe it did happen. Okay. In fact, actually it did happen, but, uh, yeah, Kona blue was, was a program to do this, but we never, never got off the ground cause we never found anything. Okay. Now, while many scientists think that it's probable alien, alien life exists in the universe, mathematically speaking, government investigations into UFOs and extraterrestrials dating back to the 1940s have said that there's no evidence that we have found them or that they have found us. And I find that very interesting. Does life on other planets exist? Well, of course it does. So it's come here. Well, of course it hasn't. (laughs) That's bizarre to me. Now, getting back to Grush. Grush's claims sparked a surge of interest in the subject during a congressional hearing. That was last year. We talked about that. Now, a bipartisan UFO caucus has also formed in Congress with lawmakers hearing several classified briefings. Now, many, including de facto caucus leader Tim Burchett, Republican from Tennessee, have been skeptical of the information offered in the briefings. Now, Burchett has repeatedly suggested the government is purposefully uh, hiding information and relying on private contractors to prevent Congress from getting the full picture of what's going on. And that is a very, very interesting theory because if the stuff exists but they don't want the government to know or want congress to know they just give it to the private contractors and you think to yourself well they'll give it to the private contractors and they'll just go ahead and release it to the public right not necessarily i mean consider this you're you're a a defense contractor and the government has said okay we're going to give you this crashed ufo we want you to take this reverse it and make us something nice out of it why would they not just come forward and say hey look what the government gave us well because there's a there's a contract for a hundred billion dollars attached to this and if you run your pie hole you don't get your hundred billion dollars that's a hundred billion reasons as to why they would not disclose that this had happened because it's all about the money. Now, again, getting back to Nell, uh, that's uh, retired Army Colonel Carl Nell. Nell was the latest official to come forward saying he believes Grush's claims, which he said were part of the evidence for his statement. He said skepticism and ridicule directed at those who believe in extraterrestrial life and contact are part of a disinformation program by the government. So this is a government guy admitting this now when pressed to say why the government would keep that information secret nell said national security potential social disruption and a lack of a plan on how to deal with the revelations were some of the motivating factors now as to how the public would react to official confirmation of alien contact it remains unseen because they've never done it but ufos have been a source of fascination for people for decades and People do want to know. Now, again, if not this, then what? I think it's it's I think it's it's believable that this has happened. In fact, in a way, you could probably not blame the government for making this public. I mean, think about it. Let's just say, let's just say for the sake of argument, for let's just say for the sake of discussion, okay? No arguments involved, just for the sake of discussion a hundred percent hypothetical situation. Let's say the Roswell spacecraft that crashed was a spacecraft and we recovered it and there were bodies in the spacecraft. And then extraterrestrials came down and said, Hey, 
these are our guys. Okay. We kind of want our bodies back and they dealt with the government. And since 1947, when the Roswell crash happened, we've been in contact. We being the United States government has been in contact with extraterrestrials all along and they exist and they walk among us and all this speculation is true. Let's just say it's true. And president Biden and Congress say, you know what? We need to let the American public know this is true. So there's a press conference. Here's the president. Here's Mitch McConnell. Here's uh, speaker Kelly, all th- vice president Harris, a whole bunch of them standing up in front of the American public with a guy says, okay, this guy is so-and-so and and he's really from another world. And he really has been, him and his folks have been talking to us since 1947 Roswell crash. Aliens are real. In fact, there's a whole bunch of them walking among us. And here's full disclosure. (laughs) What do you think the public would do? Okay. They would, they would lose their mind. So, I understand why all these guys like Carl Nell and Christopher Mellon and David Grush are saying, look, we've got this stuff and the government's just covering this stuff up. But I also understand why the government would cover it up. What's the old, uh, the old Jack Nicholson line. You can't handle the truth. Well, a lot of times the public can't handle the truth and that's, if you go back into history many, many, many times, it's been that way. Um, case in point, uh, we just celebrated, well, I shouldn't say celebrated, we just acknowledged the 80th anniversary of the D-Day landing, and that was the turning point in World War II when the U.S. and Alloy, Ally soldiers landed on Normandy Beach and Omaha Beach, or I should say Omaha Beach in Normandy, and, and, and okay, now we're here. Now we're in Europe. Now we're going to fight the Nazis on the ground. Uh, the war turned. Okay. There was a massive loss of life. And the the, the, the the government, the military, knew there would be a massive loss of life. In fact, one of the figures that I heard is that of the, uh, uh, the, the, the first boats that landed on the beach, I mean, they, they said like that five percent of the people who la- landed survived. That's it. They were just slaughtered. If that had made known, been known, made known to the public before the landing on on on, on the Normandy landing, the public would have said no. In fact, if you look back at history, that's why it took so long for the United States to get involved in World War II, because President Roosevelt. I mean, in in all the the movies, you think, okay, this country was 100% behind the war effort. Well, once we got into the war, once Pearl Harbor was bombed, sure. But before that, there was a very large section of this country who did not want to get involved. There was a smaller section who said, yeah, we need to get involved, but kind of on the side of Germany, okay, because they're going to win. Um. The history books don't tell the whole story. Uh, Until Pearl Harbor, most people in this country did not want to get involved in World War II. And the Brits and the Russians kept saying, look, you got to get involved in this war. And we give them some planes and we give them some boats and we give them some weapons, but we never gave them soldiers because we didn't want our soldiers to die someplace else. So for the longest time, the government didn't want to get involved in World War II because they didn't think the public would support it. And I think it's the same thing with full disclosure of the UFOs, UAPs. They don't think, they don't know how the public would would respond. And there's two, there's two, I guess there's two uh, houses of thought on this, I guess you could say. One of them is, look, the government needs to tell Everybody, everything about all things. Friends, <laughs> dear listeners, that has never happened in history with any country. 
governments have always kept some things under wraps. Uh, the public, the public doesn't want to know how the sausage is made. Okay. The United States government is the, we are the biggest military power in the world. Uh, sure. China has more people. China's gaining ground. Uh, Russia has maybe more nuclear weapons than we do. I mean, half of them probably even work, but the reason the United States is the superpower in the country is because we've got weapons that they don't have. Okay. Now, where did we get this? We have more money than anybody else. We have more, uh, dedicated scientists than anybody else. And maybe just maybe we kind of reversed engineered some of this stuff. Okay. Maybe. But again, what do you think the public would say if we said, yeah, since 1947, we've kind of been in contact with these extraterrestrials and uh, here they are, we're going to introduce you to them. I don't think the public would embrace that at all. In fact, it could, it could throw things into chaos. It could, 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 could cause anarchy. You think we have anarchy right now? What do you think would happen if full disclosure was made and we did have contact with intelligent life from another planet. Let's continue. Um, I've talked about this before, uh, about Area 51, and I've been to Area 51. Eh, I've been at least close to Area 51 multiple times. Um, Area 51 is a real place. They never really kept it secret until they did because people started finding out about it. In fact, there's a, uh, there's a guy, uh, he's a UFO researcher. Uh, once upon a time, the first UFO researcher who I followed was a guy named Glenn Campbell, not the singer, another guy, but Campbell doesn't do that anymore. In fact, I think he just recently died. If I'm not mistaken. I could be mistaken. I forget. Uh, but there's other guys out there, another guy out there, um, who's, uh, kind of got sat on for researching this stuff. His name is Jorg Arnu. Okay. Jorg Arnu is the creator of a website and I've been to this website. It's very interesting. In fact, you may want to check it out. If you don't believe me. He's the creator of a website that collects information on all things area 51. And he believes the future of military technology is still being tested in the Nevada desert with the most, with most of the activities occurring inside a secret base tucked inside the secret base. Yes, that's Area 51. In fact, the more secrecy, secrecy surrounding Area 51, the more insatiable the public's appetite for information is on the Nevada base. The, 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 more, inform the, the more secret it gets, the more uh, curious we get. Okay, Take, for example, dual raids on the homes owned by Area 51 Watchdog 16 months ago. That's this Yorg Arnu. Okay. Now, here's what happened with Yorg Arnu. Okay. He was... Just him and his girlfriend were in a house, and uh, he had his house raided. Okay? Now, here's what Jorg says. He says, if they don't want you to see it, you're not going to see it. And that's according to Jorg Arnu. He's the creator of a, of the website, dreamlandresort.com. Go to the website. It's very interesting. All one word, dreamlandresort.com. Okay? Uh, if you remember Dreamland, Dreamland is the name that the government gave to, to, to Area 51, okay? In fact, Art Bell years ago, uh, he had his Coast to Coast show, which is still running. But he also had a show called Dreamland, and Dreamland was on Monday nights. In fact, Dreamland is it's still a thing. It's still a show. Uh, of course, it's not hosted by Art Bell. He gave that, uh, that show to Whitley Strieber, and Whitley Strieber still does the Dreamland show once a week. It's very interesting. Uh, so this Jorg Arnu... He's got a, a website called dreamlandresort.com. It's a digital gathering place for aerospace enthusiasts, aviation watchers, and some who have worked at the best known secret bases in the world. They have years and years and decades of experience in hiding things. Now, Arnu is a naturalized U.S. citizen, and he caught Area 51 fever about two and a half decades ago. And his website has been a place for users to swap stories, post photos and make educated guesses about what's happening in the Nevada desert for the past 20 years. Now the world knows about past projects at the groom Lake facility. Now, what did they do at the groom Lake facility? 
And this is these are things that the government has later admitted to doing. The U-2 spy, fa- spy plane came from there. Earlier versions of the SR-71 SR Blackbird, the F-117 Nighthawks, stealth helicopters, those were all developed and tested at Area 51. That's just not me talking. This is the government talking. First of all, yeah, nothing, 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 nothing. Okay, yeah, we did this, 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 and that. Now, however, readers of the DreamlandResort.com website often get hints about objects currently zipping through the skies. Users believe that there are big secrets that are being kept. Now, let's go back to that Tactic Blue website. In fact, uh, our news says, look at some of the exotic planes like Tactic Blue that was developed in total secrecy, flown in total secrecy, then all of a sudden, they put it in a museum and said, yep, we have had this one for quite a while. So it's denial, 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 denial. Here it is. So again, where there's smoke, there's fire. Now, too much secrecy, however, because sometimes backfire. In fact, Area 51 was obscure and largely unknown um, until the 1980s when the Air Force illegally seized 89,000 acres of public land around the base to hide something. And I remember when this happened because that's when this that's when this whole Area 51 thing started. In fact, it was in 1989. Uh, Channel 9 News, I'm sorry, Channel 8 News in uh, Las Vegas, KLAS. They, they put the base on the map with allegations that alien technology was stashed in the Nevada Desert Base. The designation for Area 51 suddenly disappeared from maps and the government stopped acknowledging that it even existed. The secrecy only fueled more public interest. Now, since then, tens of thousands of people have made the trek to the desert to check it out. I'm one of them. In fact, if you look at old maps from the 1970s, Area 51's out there. Then all of a sudden, Dad, there's no Area 51. It's not there. What about these aircraft that leave from uh, McLaren Air Force Base every day, uh, these 737 Janet aircraft that shuttle player, uh, workers to and from? Nah, they don't exist. Okay, what was that plane that just took off? Well, it didn't exist. <laughs> and finally, it got to the point where they couldn't, uh, they couldn't deny it anymore. Now, in the early 2000s, Chuck Clark, he's an Area 51 watchdog, he revealed that the U.S. military had hidden sensors on public land miles outside the base's boundaries, meant to warn anybody approaching. The Joint Terrorism Task Force then raided Clark's home in Rachel, Nevada. Now, friends, I don't know why they did that because I'm here to tell you, and and, and they can raid my home if they want. They won't find anything. There are hidden sensors on public land miles outside of the base. How do I know? Because I've seen them. If you take Nevada Highway 375 towards Rachel, Nevada, and then turn left at the black mailbox, which is turned right now, and go up the dirt road past the rancher's house, a little past the rancher's house, and and you get to where the dirt road ends, you see these sensors all up and down the road. Okay, they're stuck on the hill. By the time you get to the gate, there will be vehicles waiting for you to make sure you do not cross into that territory. I've seen it. I've been there. I've camped out there multiple times. Now, uh, there were a bunch of events that came uh, decades later when federal agents targeted Jorg Arnu's home in Rachel and Las Vegas. He has homes in both places. Now, that was in 2022. And that raid saw Arnu and his girlfriend, Linda Hilo, held at gunpoint, presumably for something that appeared on his dreamlandresort.com website. However, no one has told Arnu what content crossed the line. He said agents treated him like a hardened criminal, or terrorist, even suspecting, apparently, that Arnu may have had his own security force. When they came in here, they asked me, are there any booby traps in my home? Of course there weren't, he said. Now, for his part, Arnu said he agreed that the U.S. military needs a location to to test secret technology. Now, when 2 million people committed to storming Area 51 in 2019, he opposed that event. However, he said when he sees things from publicly accessible lands, he takes note, adding that recently unveiled the, the, the B, B, B-21 Raider, it had some of its systems tested in Nevada skies long before the public knew it existed. Arnu also said that rumors of the SR-71 Blackbird spy plane successor are likely true. In other words, 
we've asked that question for years. Well, how come, you know, they, they retired the SR-71 Blackbird? Why did they do that? Because they don't have a plane that's that good right now. Well, the rumor is that they do have one, and they're testing it, and it's called the SR-72, and they're testing it at Area 51. Now, drones, unmanned warplanes, jamming technologies, they're the future of warfare, and they're being tested at Area 51 right now. Now, do I believe that? I don't know for sure. I can tell you this. Uh, when I go out to Death Valley, in fact, when I went out to Death Valley just uh, in April of this year, as you're going on uh, US-95, you pass the Creech Air Force Base. That's where tons of drones are. Lot, that's like the drone capital of, of the United States. Um, I've seen the protesters out there. I've seen the drones every time, except the last time I saw none, which I thought was odd. How come there's no drones out here now? Uh, here's my theory. Many times when I've gone past Creech Air Force Base before in Indian Wells, Nevada, protesters, 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 protesters galore, sightseers galore. I mean, you you can see the, the drones taking off from the highway. I mean, it's right there, friends. But the last time there were none. And I thought, I thought that's odd because drones are becoming more and more thing all the time. Perhaps they've moved them. Perhaps they've moved them to Area 51. Okay, that is something you may want to uh, you may want to consider. In fact, Arnu says they are flying drones at Area 51. They're flying drones. Uh, the Russian and Chinese work on stuff to jam our drones. We work on stuff to jam their drones. The next step is how do we make drone communications more secure? And Arnu suggested that that's what they're doing at Area 51. Not just testing to see if the drones will fly, but testing to see if the drones will fly with interference. And you really can't do that 500 yards from a U.S. highway. But you can do that in the middle of the Nevada desert where nobody can see. Now, according to Arnu, the public isn't likely, is unlikely to see much of the upcoming technology uh, as Area 51 has established an Area 51 of its own, in its own secluded area. In other words, it's a secret site in the secret site. In fact, they say it's just, just, just north of Groom Lake. It's only visible to those with their own satellite. It's really scary stuff, says Arnu. They have a whole empty valley just north of Groom Lake, and they have the mountain range where they where they can pretty much play with anything they want. It's booming out there. Area 51 isn't going anywhere. In fact, the creator of this uh, Dreamland Resort website, Arnu, um, he's collecting information on all things Area 51. He believes the most enigmatic activities taking place there occur inside the secret base, tucked inside the secret base. Now, again, where there's smoke, there's fire. Is this guy just a crackpot? If he was such a crackpot, why, why did the government raid his house? Because of something he posted, okay? They didn't arrest him. They didn't do anything else, but they raided his house, okay? Both of them to find out what the heck was going on, okay? Last but not least, one more story, Um came out of the Daily Mail, and it had to do with a guy named, uh, what's his name here? Uh, do, we have, do we have time for this? Yeah, we probably do. Uh, there's a guy named, uh, last name is Powell. What's his first name? Where's that document? Uh, Robert Powell, okay. He's, he's a uh, retired engineer, UFO, UFO investigator, Robert Powell. He told the Daily Mail um, that... Um, there's sightings in Texas, okay? And this was a 2007 mass UFO sighting in Texas. And uh, because it, 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 it was kind of like a close encounter to the third, ti- third kind type of uh, encounter. Um, lots of stuff going on there. This is, in fact, this, this story is so new, there's really not a whole lot of stuff going on. But, but apparently, uh, witnesses described an indigo plasma craft that covered most of I, there was an indigo plasma that covered most of the craft it was bone shaped like a barbell shape it extended 170 feet long it was about 60 feet wide and 20 feet tall and it flew very slowly over a tree line above an old logging road lots of people saw this 
What is it? We don't know. In fact, I don't really have much information on it. It's a brand new story. Um, but one of the guys that saw it was this, uh, this fellow, this Robert Powell, who's a retired Pentagon engineer. Okay. So another guy with big credentials saying, yep, I saw something. Don't know what it was, but I'm not making this stuff up. So who says UFOs are real? More and more people all the time. In fact, I think everyone would agree that UFOs are real, but what are they? More and more people with more and more incredibility are saying UFOs are something other than things from here. The story is not going away. I'm certainly going to continue to cover it. So stay tuned to the James Strong podcast for more stuff like this. That's it. We're done. Hope you enjoyed the podcast. James Strong show at hotmail.com. That's the email address. Send me your, uh, send me your response to this. Um, I may do more and more and more of these UFO uh, broadcasts, maybe less. Let me know if you like them. If you like them, I'll do more. If you don't like them, I'll still do them, but maybe not quite as often. Okay. Thanks. I appreciate it. That's it. Until next time, this is James Strong saying adios.